I have a few choice words for Miss Ashley Darby. It's the eighth season of The Real Housewives of Potomac, and Ashley Darby is still instigating, being messy, and trying it. Ashley, you tried it this episode. This is exactly why people don't want to trust you. But let me not get too ahead of myself. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a new recap for The Real Housewives of Potomac for this week's episode two. Let's get right into it. So, this week's episode started off with Miss Ashley Darby, as I already said. Miss Ashley is in some type of garden center with Miss Sheila. Yes, Sheila makes a comeback appearance. They're talking about how she has to organize this housewarming party. Um, they are buying some plans. They are having a little kiki in the afternoon. And what I found very interesting about this convo was that Sheila asked about asked Ashley about Candace's lawsuit. The lawsuit that Candace and Michael Darby are in together because Michael Darby has filed a lawsuit against Candace for two million dollars with the reasoning that he accuses her of defamation. I try my best each season to go ahead and give everybody a clean slate, but this scene drained me seeing the smile on Ashley's face. The messiness, it's written all over. All over. You cannot tell me that she does not know intimate details of him suing Candace. And actually, Ashley, what I find really, really funny is that at BravoCon now with Candace, you're talking about how you're at 70% like with her, that everything's fine. I really do hope that Michael Candace and, a Michael Candace and you sat down together, worked this whole thing out, and dropped this lawsuit because this is pathetic it's the perfect pattern of behavior that you have exhibited in the last eight seasons of the show you and michael cannot seem to be accountable for any little thing girl we have video proof of michael doing stuff that I must not repeat in this video because I definitely do not need that type of smoke from Mr. Darby, but the proof is in the pudding, allegedly. And how are you when everybody else chimed in, the one that's suing only Candace? What, what What is the motive? Anyways, let's jump right through this Ashley scene. I don't care about her or her tacky ass house. I'm so sorry. I don't, I do not mean to be rude, but yes, she instigates. Yes, she makes for drama, but that gets on my nerves. It's getting old. Ashley needs to stop. Get a storyline of your own. Done. Miss Mia and Karen meet up at the park to discuss a few things. Their relationship has had a stop after the dirt Mia threw at Karen's institution, as she likes to call it, last week, uh, last week, last season. Karen greets Mia with a handshake because she says, we are restarting, we are resetting, you have to earn a hug. I said, I know that is right. Um, it must hurt me a really bad seeing Karen pulling up with a Maserati. 
T, okay? Looking fabulous. I mean, let's talk about it. Karen is 60 years old and is looking better than 70 to 80% of all these other housewives. But anyways, I have to give flowers where flowers are due. I like the fact that Mia is trying to take accountability for this whole Wendy situation. Of course, she's maybe a little embarrassed to take it into full accountability, but I'm liking where this is starting off. She's telling Karen that she's sorry. She is saying that she was mixing pills and alcohol. Karen was looking at her like, girl, I guess, but um, I really like this approach. This approach can keep on coming from Mia, and I will definitely be rethinking my opinion of her because I actually do think, contrary to popular belief, that she is a very funny housewife, and all the mess going on in her personal life is going to make for at least one and a half to two seasons more of a storyline for her and the whole cast, okay? So we definitely need to keep Miss Mia Thornton. We then jump to Candace and her, I guess, someone from her team discussing her musical career. I was a bit shook after this scene because I did not expect for Candace to not even lightly shade Drew at all because the guy from her team was asking her if they should bring back someone for the next tour that Candace is gonna go on. And Candace was like, is that our only option? I said, you have to be kidding me. I thought these two were great friends. I think they still are. I think they cleared it up today on the Twitters. But I think Candace meant it in a way that she wants to shine bright on her own, which she should. She has talent, as has Drew. And yeah, that was sadly the only scene we had from Candace in this episode. The scenes have been very short for her so far, but we are only two episodes in, so I'm keeping my hopes up that we will see our girl more frequently on our screen. We then jump to Karen um, getting some of the ladies together for some Pilates or some aerobics. I do not know how to pronounce that word. Um, they're all getting together. They're all working out. Karen reveals that she has a 5% calcium accumulation in her heart, which I have yet to get into. I think it's not bad at all. Um, let's wish Karen some health, some good luck, some goodwill, because she will definitely get through this, because Karen is a boss, okay? So they all sit down and they talk once again about this lawsuit that Michael has with Candace, and Ashley is all smirky and saying how she cannot disclose any details at all is public record. And I said, of course it is. And of course you don't want to disclose anything when it comes to Michael, because when have you ever, let's be real, when have you ever disclosed anything regarding that garbage situation that you were in? I know it must be really, really sad for her to be with that goblin looking man and to get pretty much nothing thing out of a prenup if they even are getting divorced i am so sorry ashley if you're listening to this i doubt it tough love here i think you can be great on your own i just don't like the way you are messing with us once again girl get it together but anyways karen and giselle discuss karen uh, giselle's new man uh, they discussed how, you know, Candace and Wendy and, like, and Ashley, Mia, and Giselle are like, who? I know damn well this is not the same woman talking about how she doesn't care if anything happens to Mia. 
is still not being accountable. It's, y'all, this season of Potomac is going to wear me out. I already feel it in my bones, but I love the ladies. I will definitely keep on watching, even if it makes my heart race a little bit. But anyways, they wrap things up at the studio. We then jump to Mrs. Dr. Wendy, okay? Dr. Wendy is pulling up in the most gorgeous outfit, moneyed out, Birkin out with Marsha, the producer, because Wendy wants to produce a talk show that um, is going to revolve around pretty much all the things, politics, pop culture, a little ratchetness, co topics that are controversial. And I think this could be a very good route, a new business venture for Wendy to take on because she is very talkative. I like listening to her. She's a political commentator or was and I can definitely see her having a show and I am probably going to be the first one tuning in. But anyways, they're discussing, you know, cost of production, cost of the studio, renting the whole thing out. Um, it's giving a little unorganized to be quite fair with you all. Um, but I think after a whole year, Wendy has sorted things out. And I think her talk show is indeed coming. And I know that is right because Miss Dr. Wendy is always going to pull through. And let me tell you, let me disclose one detail about Wendy for this season. Wendy is activated, okay? Wendy has been activated. Many people have been sleeping on her, but she is coming in hot this season and I will get to that later on in the recap. Once we discuss uh, the scenes at Ashley's uh, housewarming party. We then jump to Aneka and Aiki, I think is his name, their new house in Potomac. It is a very nice home. $2.2 million, 6,000 square feet, five bedrooms, five bathrooms. She has such a tiny, adorable dog. And Aneka is beautiful, okay? She does remind me of Wendy a little bit. If you were to mix up a sibling for Candace and Wendy, I think she looks a lot like the both of them. Um, they're discussing some things for with, for their house with the contractor that's on site. And Aneka tells us that she is a lawyer, which I didn't know. I was really impressed to hear that. And her husband is actually a doctor. So they probably have a very good coin coming in. And Aneka has, or at least her family has, multiple properties all over the U.S. And possibly properties all over Nigeria. So Aneka and Wendy are bringing in real African wealth, honey, to the show. And I think that was definitely missed. And I find it sad that these two have a falling out. I'm already bawling my eyes out because of it because I sense that these two can be a very powerful duo powerful duo and if one of them is listening to this right now call each other up make up get on the right side of things and dominate the next seasons of the real housewives of potomac anyways we then move on to ashley's housewarming party ashley's housewarming party she has decorated her home in this like seaside type of thing. Listen, if Ashley likes it, I love it. I think it's tacky. I definitely need to agree with Mia on that one. Okay, where's the water? Everybody's pulling up. Uncle Lump is there. Giselle comes along. Karen comes along. Mia comes along. <sighs> Ugh. 
They will they will drive me crazy this season. And then Mrs. Sesame Street Deborah is attending Ashley's housewarming party. Ashley, what I said earlier, I still stand on it. You are messy. Listen, I applaud it partially because it does make good TV. But did you all catch how Deborah was trying to be in front of the camera all the time? I mean, she definitely looked nicer than last season's jump scare outfit. Um, she looked cute. I will give her that. Let's not be mean. Even though I am kind of being mean, I'm, I, I'm trying to be as neutral as I can. And all the ladies are sitting down. Also, Sharif looked nice. But I, I I just would love to see Sharice in a middle part straight haired black wig, black haired wig. Um, I think that would suit her so much. Deborah tries to sit at the table where all the ladies are filming at. So I said the thirst is real. Wendy was giving her the most satisfying side eye that I have witnessed on the season yet. And Deborah was slurping her drinks, enjoying that little bit of camera time, her two seconds of fame. And then when Aneka came along, she actually snatched Deborah's place because Aneka is the one being the new housewife. Not you, Deborah, okay? Stay in your lane. I know damn well the mess that you created they are going to probably cut you out as much as they can of the season if you have even filmed that much with Ashley. But anyways, tensions are high at this table. Um, everybody arrives. Wendy is obviously not talking to Mia. And Wendy is not talking to Giselle. And Wendy and Mia get into it. Wendy is like... You uplift women. Why can't you uplift me? And Wendy was like, because you're damn slow. <laughs> Wendy is being the shade assassin of this season. I can already feel it. But I do know that they will make up. So I guess it's not that deep between the two of them. If Wendy can have it in her heart to forgive her. Yes, that Mia threw a drink on her is very upsetting but we can't hold on to things i always listen to the brooke ashley she's one of my faves on youtube and she is also one that gets very invested in the shows as do i and she always in the lives that she does says that she tries her best not to get too invested and I feel her and I had to think about her while recapping this episode because I was the wind is winding around my house because I had to think about that whilst recapping anyways when Nika arrives the girls and get introduced, they're all asking what she does for a living, if she's new to Potomac, and Neka and Wendy immediately hit it off because they're both of Nigerian descent, they're both of, I think, the same subgroup or like the, the same place, I cannot remember the name, I don't want to butcher it because I want to be respectful, but the both of them definitely are. And they seem to be getting along quite well. And now I have to gather myself with all the power that I have in my body. Because now I am going to explain to you how Ashley Darby came in between 
the most powerful dynamic that could have been for season eight because she knew these two would be getting along too well that it would outshine her. So of course, Miss Ashley had to put herself in the middle of it so she can keep her spot on the show. I'm not being mean, I'm just being real. Wendy and Ashley excuse themselves and go inside. They begin to talk about the relationship that the two of them have. They talk about how they have not yet had the chance to become that close. At least that's what Ashley says. Trying to deflect and not taking accountability as always. Wendy clocked her right then and there and said, Well, wait a damn minute. I invited you to the birthday of my kid and you weren't there. And, and Ashley's like, well, you're right. I couldn't come. Yada, yada, yada. Wendy, she just does not want to be your friend. And that's okay. Because probably I wouldn't want to be friends with her or Giselle if you had to ask me if I need to drink a sip of my tea. And um, Wendy is definitely way too good for, for Ashley. They are intellectually speaking on two very different levels a level that Miss Ashley probably cannot comprehend. And this is no shade, this is just facts in the iconic words of Candy Burris, okay? So, Wendy's actually telling Ashley how much she means to her and the worth that she has placed on her and that she actually values her. And, Um, Ashley actually repays that by telling and spreading a lie, a complete lie and rumor about NECA to her. Painting NECA in a way that, of course, Wendy would be disappointed to hear. Listen, we have this flashback scene of Ashley and NECA meeting up for a lunch. They are discussing, you know, the women and Wendy and Ashley's asking up NECA, NECA if she knows Wendy. She's like, yeah, I've seen her at a concert. We've talked for a couple of sex. I think she's nice, yada, yada, yada. She was very open, in my opinion. She was very fine. And Ashley brings up this rumor. Did you know that? Uh, 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 Wendy was allegedly Osu, like this shunned Nigerian church group, I guess, that is frowned upon. And she's like, well, no, I didn't know if she, if she is. I am definitely not. I can tell you that. They are like bad people. And then Wendy, again, explains to the camera, to us, that these people have been shunned. And um, they, they, they are abolished in Nigeria and that she is definitely not part of it. Not, not even, I mean, as well as her family, not being part of that whole equation. So Wendy quickly clears that up. But Ashley made it seem like N Neka was shading Wendy was making it seem like Wendy was a part of it. And even the producer clocked in Ashley and said, how, how what is happening? Why did you tell Wendy this in a way that made NECA look bad? Like NECA was talking trash about her. And of course, Ashley's excuse for that is, I really did, I said that, well, damn, um, it must have been the tequila. 
This is typical Ashley Darby behavior, and this is what I'm talking about. That is what I was talking about throughout this whole video. That just gets me so riled up. I can not seem to understand this woman. Why do you feel so threatened by your co-stars that you feel the need to trash their relationship and instigate and lie so that in the first place, nothing good comes out of this. Anyways, the episode comes to an end. Wendy's feeling a type of way. She says in her confessional she expected more of a fellow Nigerian. And I completely understand her point of view. Um, we have a preview for next week's episode that upset me even more. Um, Aneka is sitting down with Robin. I have no further comment about that other than she was telling Robin that Wendy's mom called up her, I guess her, like, husband's brother and told her him, allegedly, that she has a shrine. I don't know what to believe. I don't know if Wendy's mom even did that. And even if she did, maybe she only did that to troll them to make them kind of shut up about this whole thing. Uh, just that Ashley breaks these Osu news to Karen. Karen is shocked. Let me sip some of my tea because I am dry throated. And it seems as if this is the point now where all goes downhill for Aneka's relationships with probably Wendy, Karen, and Candace. So, I guess that's a bummer. But what would you expect other than when Ashley's involved for it to be and get a little messy? But, yeah. That was it for the recap. Um, thank you so much for watching. I... I'm probably going to do my next recaps a little more different because I have noticed that my recaps exactly do not do that well. So maybe I will shorten them up and talk about them more briefly or maybe I will do some Twitter reactions with them so we can really get into the individual opinions of the people of the episodes that we are going to talk about. But anyways, you guys, thanks so much for being patient for me. I took two days off because I had a lot of work to do. And yeah, let me guys know, let, let me know what you guys thought about this episode in the comments down below. Do not forget to like and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. No membership fee, no hidden costs, nothing. It will mean the world to me. And... I will definitely see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.